Hello, and thank you for taking the time to watch our reimagined Governor State Employee Medal of Valor Awards Ceremony. My name is Irina Ortega, Director of the Department of Human Resources. I am very pleased to introduce Secretary Wade Crowfoot from the Natural Resources Agency to read the citations for their state employees whose heroic acts and service are worthy of our celebration. Thank you. Thank you. I have the distinct honor to share with you the citations for our agency's state employees' heroic actions. Each awardee went above and beyond the call of duty to save the lives of others, and although their own lives were at risk, they did not hesitate to act. Let me begin with our first department, Fish and Wildlife. By providing a citation for heroic service performed by Wildlife Officer April Esconde, California Department of Fish and Wildlife. On June 2, 2020, while patrolling at the Naval Amphibious Base Coronado Training Beach, also known as Silver Strand State Beach, Wildlife Officer April Esconde heard someone screaming for help. Using her binoculars, noticed someone caught up in the riptide, drove toward the beach, and asked dispatch to send lifeguards. Upon arrival, a man approached Af Officer Esconde, pointed out towards the surf, and told her that someone was in trouble. Esconde listened for sirens, but after hearing none, she decided that she needed to take action. She removed her safety equipment and stowed it in her vehicle and dove into the water to rescue the drowning victim. Officer Esconde swam out to the struggling victim and pulled her back to shallower waters. The woman thanked Officer Esconde and said she was okay on her own. However, once Officer Esconde let go of her, she started to flounder in the water. Officer Esconde grabbed the woman again and escorted her to the shoreline where state park lifeguards were waiting. The responding lifeguards checked the victim for injuries and asked if she needed additional medical assistance, but the victim refused and left the scene. With no regard for her own safety, Officer Esconde went above and beyond the call of duty. The state of California takes great pride in presenting this silver medal of valor to Department of Fish and Wildlife Officer April Esconde. I'd next like to provide a citation for a heroic act performed by Wildlife Officer Nathan Smith of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. On the morning of July 2nd, 2019, Wildlife Officer Nathan Smith and his canine partner Gaston were on patrol in the Sierra National Forest when a call went out over the radio that gunshots had been fired and a Fresno County Deputy Sheriff was down. Several attempts to contact the deputy via radio were unsuccessful. To complicate matters, a local resident had accompanied the deputy on a ride-along. The ride-along was with a young man with special needs and someone the deputy knew as a mentor and a friend. The Fresno County Sheriff's Patrol helicopter responded to the scene and cautiously orbited the area. Although the helicopter located the deputy's patrol truck, they were unable to determine the whereabouts of the deputy as, as well as his ride-along or the suspect. Officer Smith was not too far down the road from where the incident was occurring and arrived on the scene with the suspect still at large. The officers rallied at the bottom of the narrow, unimproved dirt road that led up to where the deputy's truck had been spotted. Wildlife Officer Smith and the other officers quickly formed a plan to conduct an emergency evacuation of the deputy and his ride-along passenger. The other officers jumped into the bed of the Wildlife Officer Smith's truck, and with Wildlife Officer Smith driving, they started up the road toward the deputy's truck. Because this was an ambush situation, Wildlife Officer Smith was forced to drive the patrol truck with his head below the dashboard, occasionally looking up to see where he was going. This was slow and methodical, but Wildlife Officer Smith had no choice, and all of the other officers were exposed to potential gunfire. As Wildlife Officer Smith cautiously navigated his way up the road, the team finally spotted the patrol truck. The deputy and his ride-along had been pinned down under the patrol truck since coming under fire. Under the constant threat of being ambushed, Wildlife Officer Smith provided rifle coverage while the other officers hastily evacuated the deputy and his ride-along from under the deputy's truck. Wildlife Officer Smith then backed up cautiously down the narrow road to relative safety. The deputy was airlifted to a local hospital in critical condition. He underwent surgery for his wounds and continues to recover. The ride-along passenger was not injured in the incident. 
With no regard for his own safety, Wildlife Officer Smith went beyond, above and beyond the call of duty. The state of California takes great pride in presenting the gold medal of valor to California Department of Fish and Wildlife Officer Nathan Smith. Next, it's my honor to provide citations uh, related to wildfires in our state. And they focus on the brave actions during California's two of California's most deadly and damaging wildfires. The campfire sparked in the early hours of November 8, 2018 in Butte County, impacting over 40,000 residents. It was one of the most deadly and most destructive wildfires in California history. It took 85 lives, burned through 153,000 acres, and destroyed almost 19,000 structures. 95% of Concow and Paradise were lost. As the fire raced from Concow to Paradise at a high speed, responders faced down flames and down trees that blocked roadways, forcing them to find alternative routes and, and seeking refuge as they could. The car fire, which started on the afternoon of July 23rd, started near the community of Whiskey Town in Shasta County and eventually burned into Trinity County too. The car fire quickly jumped the Sacramento River and for several days later initiated the evacuation of the city of Redding. While Redding was spared, the fire did destroy multiple towns around Whiskey Town Lake, killed eight, three of whom were firefighters. In total, the car fire scorched nearly 230,000 acres and destroyed over 100 or 1,000 homes and ranks as the seventh most destructive fire in our state's history. Even under extreme fire conditions, personnel risked their lives to protect people and property as well as each other. While these two fires caused severe damage and resulted in extreme loss of life, it was the heroic actions of firefighters and other emergency response personnel that saved lives and towns. It's an honor to recognize leaders uh, in those fires today. The first is a citation for a heroic act performed by Fire Captain Jeff Edson and Fire Apparatus Engineer Elliot Hopkins of the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, what we know as CAL FIRE. On November 8, 2018, CAL FIRE Captain Jeff Edson and Fire Apparatus Engineer Elliot Hopkins were on duty at Jarbo Gap, responding to the campfire. As they made their way to the intersection of Concow and Hoffman Roads, spot fires were beginning to establish around the area. They decided to go down to Hoffman Road to alert and evacuate residents using the truck's public announcement system to advise residents to evacuate and pulling into driveways to encourage residents to leave. Spot fires at this point were now established across Concow Lake and below Sawmill Lookout as Captain Edson and Engineer Hopkins reached the last house on Hoffman Road and realized they should head back out. As they traveled back down Hoffman Road, they encountered an injured woman standing in the road. They placed her in the back seat of the truck and continued on. The numerous spot fires had grown together by this time and the winds were intense. The fire was burning along both sides of Hoffman Road and the smoke was so thick that completely obscured the road, forcing them to rely on their GPS system to navigate through the smoke. As they reached the creek crossing, four men warned that the road ahead was blocked and there was no way out. Cars started to back up behind their truck. Captain Edson realized that they needed to take advantage of the creek as a temporary place of refuge. Captain Edson and Engineer Hopkins worked together as many people as they could and escorted them down into the creek. As the fire grew more intense, Engineer Hopkins made one last trip up to the line of cars using both his own and Captain Edson's fire shelters to shield people from the extreme heat as he led them back down to the shelter of the creek. While dozens of individuals took temporary shelter in the creek, Captain Edson returned to the truck and coordinated by radio with a bulldozer to clear Hoffman Road. With the bulldozer working to clear the road, Captain Edson and Engineer Hopkins began getting people out of the creek and into any vehicle that would still run, cramming as many pets and people in each vehicle as possible. The fire was so intense that some of the vehicles literally caught fire as they began driving out. Captain Edson and Engineer Hopkins were the last to leave the creek. Arriving at the safety area being built by the bulldozer, they realized it was not big enough and chose to escort their survivors to a safer location. Once the survivor's safety was ensured, Captain Edson and Engineer Hopkins returned to the fire line, 
where they assisted with the rescue of a civilian with severe burn injuries. With no regard for their own safety, Captain Edson and Engineer Hopkins went above and beyond the call of duty. The state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor, the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, Fire Captain Jed, Jeff Edson and Engineer Elliot Hopkins. Next, I'm proud to present a citation for heroic act performed by Battalion Chief Sims Hawkins of the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. On November 8, 2018, Cal Fire Battalion Chief Sims Hawkins was assigned to the Camp Fire, overseeing firefighting operations in the central portion of Paradise. At around 11.30 a.m. that morning, Chief Hawkins was contacted by a woman who stated that her elderly parents were trapped by the fire at their home and Paragalia Way. Realizing that the location was in a neighboring division and that the commanding officer for that division was himself involved with the rescuing of civilians, Chief Hawkins decided to try and drive to the home himself. While traversing town roads en route to the home, Chief Hawkins encountered many obstacles, including evacuating citizens, blocked road, abandoned cars, heavy smoke, ember cast, flames, down trees, and fallen utility poles, which he navigated around and through. As Chief Hawkins turned onto the road where the seniors lived, he encountered heavy fire conditions and realized there was a significant risk that he may not make it out himself. The GPS navigation indicated that the home would be near the end of the road. Chief Hawkins navigated blindly through a wall of flames, embers, and heavy black smoke as the navigation advised him, your dress is on the left. As he opened his truck door, smoke blew in and embers entered his vehicle. Having had no time to fully dress for the extreme fire condition, Chief Hawkins suffered small burn injuries to his neck, chest, and stomach from the blowing embers. Chief Hawkins could hear screams of terror in the distance. Following the screams, he ran up a walking path near the home to a double gate where he could only open one side and squeeze through. Now in the front yard area, he could see that the home was almost completely involved in fire. He found an elderly couple huddled together on the ground in a small green unburned area near the southeast corner of the building. The elderly man required a walker to walk, so Chief Hawkins instructed him to stand up and hold on to his walker. Then he grabbed the man in a bear hug fashion and partially carried him toward the gate while the woman followed. The gate was too narrow to carry the man through with his walker. So Chief Hawkins slid the walker through and then the man and then himself. As he turned around, he noticed the woman had retreated due to the increasing fire conditions. Chief Hawkins carried the man to his truck and loaded him into the front passenger seat. As he did so, thousands of embers blew into the cab of the truck. Chief Hawkins returned to look for the woman. He found her lifted her in a firefighter carry position, carried her to the truck, and loaded her inside. With heavy smart fire and smoke conditions, he was unable to see the roadway. Instead, he relied on GPS navigation to keep him on the ro roadway as he drove slowly. Chief Hawkins proceeded to the intersection of Clark and Billy Roads, where he met a waiting ambulance and transferred the couple into the care of paramedics. Chief Hawkins recalled the woman saying over and over, you are our savior. You are our savior. If it were not for the heroic actions of Chief Hawkins, it was impossible that Mr. and Mrs. Parker would have survived the campfire. Chief Hawkins continued that day operating as division group supervisor and actually over the course of 13 days. With no regard for his own safety or life, Chief Hawkins went above and beyond the call of duty. The state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, Battalion Chief Sims Hawkins. Next, I'm proud to provide a citation for a heroic act performed by heavy fire equipment operator Joe Kennedy of the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. Also on November 8, 2018, Cal Fire heavy fire equipment operator Joe Kennedy arrived in Paradise during the first hours of the campfire to find that fire was establishing itself along the Pence Road corridor with hundreds of residents, patients, 
and employees of the Feather River Hospital trying to flee the area. Engine 2390 with Captain John Jensen and two firefighters became stuck in traffic along with dozens of other vehicles on Pearson Road near Dry Creek. Captain Jensen ordered air support, but conditions were too extreme. Then over the radio came the request, can we get a dozer to move cars on Pearson Road? Kennedy was nearby on dozer 2342. Since all roads were jammed with traffic, he drove the dozer through backyards to get to Pearson Road from the hospital. As he was heading towards Pearson Road, he encountered a California Highway Patrol officer and nurses trying to escape the fire on foot. The visibility was extremely limited and the CHP officer waved his flashlight to get Mr. Kennedy's attention. Kennedy stopped the dozer to see what was happening. The nurses got into the dozer. Mr. Kennedy explained that he didn't have room for the two of them inside the dozer and directed them to get into the fire engine directly behind him. Traffic was at a standstill on Pearson Road throughout the Dry Creek drainage, which was burning under strong winds with the flames consuming brush, timber, structures, and vehicles. Vehicles two and three across were all trying to move west on Skyway out of town. The vehicles on Pearson Road that were nearest the ravine were catching fire as the wildland fire burned intensely in the drainage. It would not be long before the cars in the middle and right side also caught fire. People had bailed out of the burning cars and taken refuge in cars further from the flames. If something was not done soon, there could be more fatalities. Kennedy used the dozer to push cars off the road, opening a path for the remaining vehicles and allowing the trapped vehicles to escape the flames, saving many lives. With no regard for his own safety or life, Joe Kennedy went above and beyond the call of duty, and the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection Heavy Fire Equipment Operator Joe Kennedy. It's now my honor to provide uh, citations to employees of our Department of Parks and Recreation, what we know as state parks. And these citations are related to the campfire as well. The first is a citation for a heroic act performed by State Park Peace Officer Supervisor Wallace Kuhn, State Park Peace Officer Mark Hofer, State Park Peace Officer Dan uh, Daniel Marinella, and State Park Peace Officer Eldon McBride of the California Department of Parks and Recreation. On November 28, 2018, State Park Supervising Ranger Wallace Kuhn and State Park Peace Officers Mark Hofer, Daniel Marinella, and Eldon McBride responded to the devastating campfire during the first initial hours of the fire. Together, they worked to evacuate hundreds of homes in the Paradise, Megalia, and Concow areas. Supervisor Ranger Kuhn also helped the evacuation of the Feather River Hospital, which was severely damaged by the fire. While rescuing residents, the officers were confronted by scorching flames that downed trees and blocked roads. They continuously found safer routes to prevent the public and themselves from being trapped by the fire. Although well aware of the number of lives already lost to the rapidly spreading fire, they tirelessly and bravely went back into harm's way repeatedly to do whatever it took uh, and whatever was necessary to save lives, working long hours in dangerous conditions. At one of the homes, Officer McBride helped an elderly woman who was not able to get her vehicle out of the garage because of the power had shut off. Officer McBride was able to enter the locked garage and get the vehicle out in time for her to escape the approaching fire. Supervising Ranger Kuhn played a critical role coordinating resources on the ground in the active fire area, in addition to helping to evacuate residents. He helped get to, to get to staff where they were needed to save as many people as possible. He provided current information on the conditions that the first responders were facing and made tough decisions to balance helping the community with keeping the first responders safe. In his role as communicator and coordinator, as well as rescuer, Supervising Ranger Kuhn was in a vital and courageous, he was a vital and courageous part of the Northern Buttes District's team during the camp fire. With no regard for, for their own safety or lives, Supervisor Ranger, Ranger Kuhn and Officers Hofer, Marinella, and McBride went above and beyond the call of duty. And the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor 
to Department of Parks and Recreation State Park Peace Officer Supervisor Wallace Kuhn and California Department uh, and Recreation State Park Peace Officers Mark Hofer, Daniel Marinella, and Eldon McBride. Next, I'd like to provide a citation for a heroic awe act to performed by State Park Peace Officer Sabrina Buis and State Park Peace Officer Travis Gee of the California Department of Parks and Recreation. On November 8, 2018, State Park Peace Officer Sabrina Buis was called into the respond to the campfire. Meanwhile, Supervising Ranger Travis Gee woke up at his residence in Paradise and saw the glow of the campfire through his window. He got up immediately and responded to assist his community. Working together that day, Officer Buis and Supervisor Ranger, Supervising Ranger Gee helped evacuate hundreds of people who remained in burned over areas in the town of Paradise. While helping rescue and evacuate people, Officer Buis and Supervisor, Supervising Ranger Gee came across flames and downed trees that blocked roadways, forcing them to find alternative routes to prevent the evacuees from being trapped by the swift moving fire. At one point, they worked with a Cal Fire captain to cut down power lines and clear debris along Clark Road to rescue evacuees who were surrounded by fire. They were aware of the large number of lives that had already been lost and yet bravely and tirelessly put themselves in harm's way to save others. Officer Buis was a new officer with California State Parks and was only a few months out of her field training program. Despite her rookie status, Officer Buis responded and handled herself like a seasoned professional that day. Supervising Ranger Gee worked to save members of the community even though he knew that his, ho his own home and the homes of his family members had already been burned down. In addition, he did not know if his family had been able to safely evacuate. It actually wasn't until later that he was able to confirm that all of his family members made it safely out of the area. With no regard for their safety or their own lives, Officer Buis and Supervising Ranger Gee went above and beyond the call of duty. And the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to California Department of Parks and Recreation, State Park Peace Officer Sabrina Buis, and California Department of Parks and Recreation, State Park Peace Officer Supervisor Travis Gee. Next, I'm proud to provide a citation for a heroic act performed by State Park Peace Officers Christopher Beener and Zachary Chambers of the California Department of Parks and Recreation. On November 8, 2018, the State Park Peace Officers were partnered with a U.S. Forest Service officer res responding to the campfire, where they helped to direct traffic and assist with evacuations. The sky was black and the roadway was lit by flames and his, as, and his headlights. As Officer Chamber moved to Pearson Road, he encountered more flames, downed line, and trees. He was quickly surrounded by fires and embers uh, that blew into his vehicle. A firefighter was leaving the area. He told Officer Chambers, you're not going to make it, and if we don't leave, we are going to die. However, however Officer Chambers continued to help evacuate homes with the fire again surrounding him. He helped evacuate an elderly couple and their pets from the front of their residence while the back of their home was already on fire. As they were leaving, there were flames on both sides of the road and they had to drive literally through the flames, hoping the vehicle did not catch on fire. The whole time Officer Chambers was working, he was worried about his wife. He had told her she would be, going, uh, would be safe going into work in paradise, but he never imagined the fire would have grown so quickly. With the phones down, he was unable to find out if his wife was safe until hours later. Thankfully, she was able to move safely and make it out of paradise. Officer Chambers was then assigned to evacuate Yankee Hill. At the time, he believed the fire was going in the opposite direction. However, soon after the area was evacuated, it was on fire. Meanwhile, Officer Beener helped evacuate homes in the Paradise and Concow communities while the fire raged. Officer Beener and Chambers next went to help evacuate the community of Megalia. They met a group of Butte County Sheriff deputies in Megalia doing evacuations, but shortly after their arrival, the fire threatened to cut off all the routes out of Megalia. All of the deputies evacuated the area, but Officers Beener and Chambers stayed in Megalia to evacuate as many people as they could, in spite of the risk of being trapped by the fire. With no regard for their own safety or lives, officers Beener and Chambers went above and beyond the call of duty. 
and the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor. To California Department of Parks and Recreation, State Park Peace Officers Christopher Beener and Zachary Chambers. Next, I'm proud to provide a citation for a heroic act, act performed by State Park Peace Officer Scott Sipes and State Park Peace Officer Matthew Stalter of the California Department of Parks and Recreation. On November 8th, 2018, State Park Supervising Ranger Scott Sipes and State Park Peace Officer Matthew Stalter were called away from teaching at the Law Enforcement Academy at Butte College to respond to the campfire in Butte County. They were directed to the Feather River Hospital to assist with evacuations. However, before they could get to the hospital, the two officers stopped to help with evacu evacuations in the area of Clark Road and Pence Road with officers from other agencies. Traffic quickly became an issue and they helped coordinate traffic at Skyway and Pence Roads. At this intersection, traffic became gridlocked and a large crowd formed. The fire was quickly approaching and a decision was made to move the group to a nearby shopping center to shelter in place. Supervising Ranger Sipes and Officer Stalter helped move the group and then made a final sweep on Pence Road for evacuees. Before they could get back to the shelter area, the rapidly moving fire jumped the road, trapping the officers and the evacuees. They used the Paradise Ridge Southern Baptist Church for a shelter amidst homes engulfed in fire. Once the fire passed, Supervising Ranger Sipes and Officer Stalter relocated the evacuees and civilian vehicles to the Kmart Shopping Center on Wagstaff Road and Clark Road. The two officers then went to the Feather River Hospital to evacuate and transport patients to Oroville. While evacuating two patients, they had to stop and extinguish a vehicle that was on fire. They continued to help evacuate people from the area, allowing nothing to deter them including being nipped by a dog while getting people to safety. With no regard for their own safety or lives, supervising Ranger Sipes and Officer Stalter went above and beyond the call of duty. And the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to California Department of Parks and Recreation, State Park Peace Officer Supervisor Scott Sipes and State Park Peace Officer Matthew Stalter. Next, I'll provide citations related to the Car Fire, another dangerous fire where state personnel exercise tremendous heroism. Starting by providing a citation for a heroic act. On July 26, 2018, Cal Fire pilot Nicholas Lopes responded to the fire to protect air support using his helicopter to drop water onto the flames. Just before 6 p.m., a bulldozer operator, Don Smith, made contact by radio and requested water drops. The fire had jumped over the bulldozer line that he had been working, trapping him. Pilot Lopes immediately began making numerous water drops through the smoke in the bulldozer's last known location in an effort to stave off the flames and save Mr. Smith's life. Through heavy smoke, wind, and rapidly growing fire activity, Pilot Lopes made approximately 21 trips, dropping an estimated 5,000 gallons of water on the area. These drops persisted over 20 minutes until Pilot Lopes was forced to land inside the fire area at the base of Spring Creek Dam when a temperature warning light came in his helicopter. Pilot Lopes returned to his mission after only 20 minutes on downtime and continued the water drops. He risked his life by returning to the air despite the warning light, which indicated that the air temperatures outside were high enough to dangerously decrease the helicopter's performance and made the challenging conditions even more perilous. Tragically, bulldozer operator Don Smith perished in the fire, despite the heroic efforts of Pilot Lopes. With no regard for his own safety or life, Pilot Lopes went above and beyond the call of duty, and the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, Forestry Fire Pilot Nicholas Lopes. Next, we'll provide a citation for a heroic act performed by Fire Captain Sean Rayleigh and Fire Captain Specialist Darren Stewart of the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. On July 26, 2018, during the Car Fire, Cal Fire Fire Captain Sean Rayleigh and Fire Captain Specialist Darren Stewart were making several trips to evacuate homes in the Stanford Hills and Land Park subdivisions 
who had not been previously ordered to leave. While they were conducting the evacuations, conditions deteriorated to the point that their own lives were in peril. While leading civilian evacuees out of the neighborhood, Captain Rayleigh learned that a family of three was still at home in the Stamford Hills subdivision and made the decision to return to help them evacuate. During this time, a fire tornado was seen approaching the area. Captain Rayleigh reached the family and loaded them into his truck. As they were leaving the community, they joined Captain Specialist Stewart, who was driving his own truck. Both vehicles were forced to travel slowly due to the heavy smoke. Suddenly, both trucks were struck by flying debris, rocks, and embers. The vehicles began to shake violently and the passenger windows shattered as they were hit by the fire tornado. Captain Specialist Stewart saw a person attempting to get into his truck and directed him to climb into the back seat. He then saw a second man running toward him wrapped in a fire shelter. Captain Specialist Stewart directed the second man who had been operating a bulldozer that was damaged by the fire tornado into the back seat as well. Despite the damage to their vehicles, Captain Rayleigh and Captain Specialist Stewart were able to drive away from danger and deliver their passengers to other first responders who treated their injuries and evacuated them all from the area. Captain Rayleigh and Captain Specialist Stewart saved the family of three, another individual and the bulldozer operators, or operator whose vehicle burnt during the fire tornado. With no regard for their own safety or lives, Captain Rayleigh and Captain Specialist Stewart went above and beyond the call of duty and the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection, Fire Captain Sean Rayleigh and Fire Captain Specialist Darren Stewart. Next, I'm proud to provide a citation for a heroic act performed by Fire Captain Eric Schwab and Fire Captain Byron Vance of the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. On July 26, 2018, during the CAR fire, CAL FIRE Battalion Chief Eric Schwab was acting as a helicopter coordinator. Flying along with him in the he helicopter was CAL FIRE Fire Captain Byron Vance, helicopter coordinator trainee. They responded to a radio report from a bulldozer operator, Don Smith, advising that he was cut off by the fire. Chief Schwab directed a series of coordinated water drops by multiple helicopters on Operator Smith's last known location. Recognizing the severity of the situation, Chief Schwab directed his own helicopter to maneuver through extreme weather conditions until he was able to see Operator Smith's location. They maintained visual contact with the area and provided updates and direction to ground and air resources until the scene was stabilized. A short time later, Chief Schwab and Captain Vance noted deteriorating weather conditions, increased fire activity, and a large vortex of smoke and flame. In an effort to support evacuations already in progress, Chief Schwab directed another helicopter pilot to maintain routes of travel for the evacuees with water drops. In the course of that assignment, the helicopter reported two occupied vehicles trapped by fire at the end of a driveway near the Sacramento River. Chief Schwab ordered the helicopter to drop its bucket and land and actually land to aid the people who were trapped in their vehicles while directing his own helicopter to do the same. Upon landing, Chief Schwab told Captain Vance to make contact with one of the vehicles while the other helicopter crew assisted the occupants of the second vehicle. Captain Vance ran about a quarter mile amidst the fire from the helicopter landing zone to the endangered vehicle. There was an elderly couple with the debilitating medical conditions inside the vehicle, attempting to escape the oncoming flames. Captain Vance took control of the vehicle and drove back to the helicopter. Chief Schwab and Captain Vance helped load the couple into the helicopter and flew them to safety. Once the couple were safe at a nearby landing zone, Chief Schwab and Captain Vance returned to their assignment. With no regard for their own safety or lives, Chief Schwab and Captain Vance went above and beyond the call of duty. The state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection Battalion Chief Eric Schwab and Fire Captain Byron Vance. Next, 
I'm proud to provide citations to our state parks team related to the Car Fire, uh, that same fire where Cal Fire and state parks partnered to save lives. The first is a citation for heroic service performed by state park peace officers Mark Hofer and Michael Van Pelt of the California Department of Parks and Recreation. On the morning of July 26, 2018, officers Mark Hofer and Michael Van Pelt responded to the car fire to ensure no one was trapped on or around Whiskeytown Lake. The officers were also tasked with preventing the loss of any more lake vessels and with supporting other fire suppression activities. Most of the areas where the officers were working were isolated and unreachable by fire trucks or air support. The officers towed their trailer and patrol boat to the lake to launch it, but due to the boat's high clearance, down power lines and trees, and fire on all sides, they had difficulty getting through. Eventually, they were able to launch their patrol boat, which was equipped with fire hoses and firefighting equipment, and spent a long day doing fire suppression activity on the lake. That evening, fire activity grew increasingly dangerous, so they were ordered off the lake. As other officers tried to get the rangers out, there was a fire pattern known as a fire tornado that had never been seen before in that area. Fire kept crossing their path and was all around the officers who had to figure out new routes and, and to improvise to, to flee the area. Officer Hofer later showed other rangers a video of the flames touching the vessel. Public Safety Chief Aaron Wright asked him what made him think to record the evacuation, and he said, I thought we were going to die, and I wanted it recorded. The two officers went back early the next day on the same assignment, with the fire still extremely active. This time their patrol boat broke down on the water, likely due to heat damage from the day before. With no one able to get to them, little or no radio communication because the tower was burned down, and fire on all sides, Officers Hofer and Van Pelt had to figure out how to get out to safety. Being resourceful, they used their fire suppression hose as a propulsion system to get back to shore. Officers Hofer and Van Pelt both continued to work on the vessel task force, a 24-hour detail that was so successful, the task force was asked to follow the front lines of the fire from Whiskeytown Lake to Trinity Lake and then on to Shasta Lake. The task force went from one vessel to eight vessels and multiple agencies working together by the end of the fire. They assisted with fire suppression activities, provided medical support to line staff, performed emergency evacuations, transported more than 3,500 firefighters to the front lines, and acted as scouts for the other units that were fighting the fire. The actions of Officer Hofer and Van Pelt helped save lives during the car fire. With no regard for their own safety or lives, Officers Hofer and Van Pelt went above and beyond the call of duty, and the state of California takes great pride in presenting this silver medal of valor to Department of Parks and Recreation State Park Peace Officers Mark Hofer and Michael Van Pelt. Next, I'll provide a citation for heroic service performed by State Park Superintendent to Lori Martin, California Department of Parks and Recreation. On the evening of July 26, 2018, Superintendent Lori Martin, who was in charge of the Shasta State Historic Park, had already been working the destructive car fire for a couple of days. During this devastating fire, she tirelessly worked to protect the park and all of its irreplaceable artifacts and collections. Due to the speed and unpredictable nature of the car fire, officers were unable to get teams safely into the park to evacuate the priceless collections. Public Safety Chief Aaron Wright watched Superintendent Martin fight the fire as it came into the Shasta Historic Park and advised her of just how bad the fire was getting. He told her she should leave before she was trapped. She said she would, would but first had to coordinate the activities of the firefighters who were battling the blaze. Chief Wright left to get other staff out and when he returned, found Superintendent Martin still fighting the fire. Everyone, including the firefighters, was ordered out Yet even after all the other firefighters were evacuated, Superintendent Martin was still fighting the fire to protect the buildings. He told her to leave the area for her safety. She said with a determined resolve and complete disregard for her own safety that she had to protect the collections. Finally, after some discussion, she reluctantly agreed to leave until the fire's intensity lessened. Her passion and dedication to protecting this park will never be forgotten. 
the work necessary to fight the fire and protect the important historical collections at Shasta State Historic Park required long days in dangerous conditions. Superintendent Martin helped save most of the park, including all of the state's irreplaceable collections and artifacts. With no regard for her own safety or life, Superintendent Martin went above and beyond the call of duty, and the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Silver Medal of Valor to Department of Parks and Recreation State Park Superintendent Lori Martin. The Kincaid Fire, like the Camp and Car Fires, was a damaging wildfire that burned in 2019 in the Napa Valley region. The next citation focuses on a heroic action taken during the Kincaid Fire, and it is a citation for a heroic act performed by Fire Captain Jason Dyer of the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. On October 25, 2019, Fire Captain Jason Dyer was assigned as Division Group Supervisor on the Kincaid Fire in the Sonoma Lake Napa Unit. Fire Captain Dyer was actively engaged in structured defense operations. While attempting to locate his resources, Fire Captain Dyer found himself at a house that was about to be impacted by the fire. He tried to exit the area, but his exit route was cut off by the fire. Fire Captain Dyer returned to the house in order to use it as a temporary refuge while the fire passed. At that point, two people fleeing from the fire drove up to the location. Fire Captain Dyer instructed them to remain with, the, with him since their exit was cut off and fire intensity around the house continued to increase. Recognizing the dire situation, Fire Captain Dyer radioed the helicopter coordinator, declared his situation as immediately life-threatening, and requested helicopter water drops. Fire Captain Dyer considered using the house to protect the people from the heat and flames, but as radiant heat from the fire increased, he decided to use his personal fire shelter to protect them. For approximately 10 minutes, all three of them took refuge in a one-person fire shelter. During this time, embers entered the shelter in areas where it was difficult to maintain a seal. Once the blowing embers died down, Fire Captain Dyer exited the shelter, noticed the house was burning, and relocated the three further away. Four helicopters provided approximately 16 water drops while they were trapped by the fire. Once fire ac activity subsided, Fire Captain Dyer and the two others were transported to a local hospital and treated for minor injuries. Fire Captain Dyer unselfishly utilized his one-person protective fire shelter to shelter himself and two others, ultimately saving all three of their lives. With no regard for his own safety nor his life, Fire Captain Dyer went above and beyond the call of duty and the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to Fire Protection Battalion Chief Jason Dyer. We will now share a heroic act taken by a CAL FIRE first responder, and I'll provide a citation for a heroic act performed by Firefighter Chad Burns of the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection. In the early hours of March 3rd, 2020, Firefighter Chad Burns responded to the city of Temecula for a cons confined space rescue. Upon arrival, it was determined that a victim was yelling for help from a storm water runoff pipe system. Firefighter Burns, the primary rescuer, entered the pipe system to rescue the victim. Upon entering the 36 inch pipe, he traveled 100 feet and then made entry into an 18 inch pipe. Firefighter Burns traversed approximately 175 feet into the 18-inch pipe, maximizing the capability of the rescue system. Firefighter Burns, like many other confined space technicians, has completed this task in a training situation, in a training situation on a small scale, but never at such a distance while wearing full protective personal equipment, a rope system with a harness, and supplied air respirator. In order to move, Firefighter Burns had to completely stretch out and crawl through the tight space. To retreat, he had to crawl backwards through the pipe. Firefighter Burns made his way down the pipe system into the cold and dark without knowing how far he was going to travel. All the while, the victim, who was acting erratically, made violent threats to Firefighter Burns while he was making his way forward. Firefighter Burns had no idea what direction the victim was facing within the pipe system. Had he, been able, had, he, had he been face to face with the victim, he could have easily been attacked. 
At that point, firefighter Burns could have stopped the rescue attempt due to safety concerns, but he continued forward without hesitation. The first attempt was unsuccessful because the rope system detached from the victim. A handful of other rescuers attempted to reach the victim, but none of them could traverse the 18-inch pipe because of the stress and anxiety caused by the narrow space. Firefighter Burns was called upon again to attempt a second rescue, and he did not hesitate. He courageously talked another rescuer out of going into the pipe because he did not want him to have to go through the same ordeal that he had just experienced. Firefighter Burns, now cold and wet, went through the pipe a second time. The victim began throwing things at Firefighter Burns as he was making his way through the pipe. The victim retreated further up the pipe system beyond the 300 foot maximum distance that the standard rescue systems are able to accommodate. Firefighter Burns' efforts surpassed the standards and expectations as he put himself at great risk to save another human life. With no regard for his own safety or life, Firefighter Burns went above and beyond the call of duty and the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection firefighter Chad Burns. I will now share several heroic acts carried out by state park employees. First, a citation for a heroic act performed by lifeguard Ian Miller of the California Department of Parks and Recreation. On the evening of December 15, 2018, State Parks lifeguard Ian Miller was on duty near Pudding Creek Beach in Fort Bragg when he heard a call about two kayakers in distress near the town of Westport. He responded to the scene through rain and darkness and found one victim on shore suffering from hypothermia. The second victim was still in the water about 75 yards offshore. Lifeguard Miller entered the surging surf alone and in the dark. He had to contend with dangerous ocean conditions, including six and a half foot swells every 12 seconds, 15 knot wind, exposed rocks, and breaking surf. Using his helmet flashlight, buoy, fins, and rescue board, he made his way to the victim, who was face down in the water and brought her back to shore. Once on shore, lifeguard Miller performed CPR on the victim until patient care was taken over by the paramedics. She was transported, the victim was transported to Santa Rosa and made a full recovery. The victim would have drowned if not for Lifeguard Miller's life-saving actions. With no regard to his own safety, Lifeguard Miller went above and beyond the call of duty. The state of California takes great pride in presenting the Gold Medal of Valor to Department of Parks and Recreation Lifeguard Ian Miller. Next, I'll provide a citation for heroic service performed by State Park Peace Officers Chris Hendricks and Brett Weber of the California Department of Parks and Recreation. On May 4th, 2019, just before midnight, State Park Peace Officer Chris Hendricks and his canine partner, Janko, were on duty at Oceano Dunes State Vehicular Recreation Area with State Park's Peace Officer Brett Weber. While on patrol, dispatch advised Officer Hendricks and Weber of an active shooting happening in the beach camping area. Multiple shots had been fired from what appeared to be an automatic weapon. Numerous victims were down with gunshot wounds and dozens of others were attempting to flee to safety. Officers Hendricks and Weber immediately responded to the scene to assist the victims. When officers Hendricks and Weber arrived on scene, they found pure chaos. Over 300 people were running to safety while others flagged down the officers to plead for assistance for friends who had been shot. Officers Hendricks and Weber deployed their weapons and attempted to locate the shooter. While they searched, someone flagged down the officers and directed them to a victim with gunshot wounds. They quickly assessed that the wounds were not life-threatening and instructed bystanders to keep applying direct pressure. They continued their search for the shooter. The officers asked people if they knew where the shooter was and were directed towards a trailer. They entered the trailer, but the shooter was not inside. At this point, the officers realized that the active shooting had ceased and they transitioned from finding the shooter to treating the injured victims. Officers Hendricks and Weber returned to the first gunshot victim they had encountered. While they were providing medical care to the victim, 
A group ran up to them, screaming that there was another victim nearby with a serious gunshot wound to his upper leg. Realizing the seriousness of the second victim's wound location, Officer Hendricks advised Officer Weber to continue treating the first victim while he ran to the second victim to begin assessing his wound. As Officer Hendricks arrived, the gunshot victim was screaming in agony. Several dozen bystanders were crowding around the victim and acting out of control, causing Officer Hendricks to fear for his own safety. Officer Hendricks ordered everyone to get back so he could help the victim. He applied a tourniquet to the victim's left leg and was able to stop the bleeding. Officer Hendricks loaded the victim into a CAL FIRE truck that had arrived and the CAL FIRE medics transported the victim off the beach. The San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Department and State Parks Peace Officers began an hour-long manhunt that ensued through the night. Through this collaborative effort, the Sheriff's Department was able to locate and arrest the suspect the following day. The courage and bravery of Officers Hendricks and Weber displayed during their initial response to this horrific event was nothing short of heroic. Their courageous actions helped to rescue dozens of innocent people, prevent more from being shot, and save the life, lives of two gunshot victims. With no regard for their own safety or lives, Officer Hendricks and Weber went above and beyond the call of duty. The state of California takes great pride in presenting the Silver Medal of Valor to Department of Parks and Recreation State Park Peace Officers Chris Hendricks and Brett Weber. Next, I'll provide a citation for heroic service performed by State Park Peace Officer Andrew Helbel of the California Department of Parks and Recreation. On September 29, 2018, State Park Peace Officer Andrew Helbel was off duty and diving for lobster on opening day of lobster season in the ocean off Beacons Beach with his brother-in-law and a friend on a kayak. When the three friends heard someone scream, I got bit, I got bit, they spotted a 13-year-old boy who had also been diving for lobster approximately 80 yards away and about 100 yards from the shore. The victim saw the kayak group and began swimming toward them. Officer Helbel and his brother-in-law swam approximately 60 yards to reach the victim. Meanwhile, Officer Helbel's friend paddled the kayak over. Upon reaching the victim, Officer Helbel observed major traumatic injuries on, his, on the victim's face, neck, shoulder, and back consistent with a shark attack. He assisted the bloodied teen onto the kayak and then stabilized the injured diver on the unsteady and now overloaded single-person kayak while his friend paddled the craft through the surf to shore. Officer Helbel, an emergency medical technician, used his training to stop life-threatening bleeding and prevent the onset of shock while swimming alongside the kayak. Multiple witnesses reported that the aggressive shark thought to be a 10 to 12 uh, foot great white, trailed the group as they made their way to the shore. The rescuers reached the beach and were met by Encinitas lifeguards who had been summoned by multiple 911 calls. Once ashore, Officer Hellbull assisted the responding on-duty lifeguards with patient care, scene management, and landing a medical transport helicopter. One of those 911 callers was the victim's mother who was on the beach heard her son's screams and witnessed his rescue. Without the assistance of Officer Helbel and his friends, the victim's mother believes her son would have died in the water due to his extensive injuries. He ultimately required over a thousand stitches. His thankful mother said of the rescuers, it absolutely required courage for them to respond to this call uh, and my son's call for help and not swim away to save their own lives. And with the shark still in the area, they risked their lives to save my son. I'll be forever grateful. With no regard for his own safety or life, Officer Helbel went above and beyond the call of duty. And the state of California takes great pride in presenting the Silver Medal of Valor to Department of Parks and Recreation State Park Peace Officer Andrew Helbel. Thank you, awardees, for all that you have done for the state of California. It is an honor to serve as Secretary for California Natural Resources, knowing that our state is so well protected by first responders like yourselves.